Welcome back to the Black Rifleman's Organization. This is your brother from another mother with another tabletop review. Today we have the H and K USP9 version 1. Now this pistol is special because this is my wife's pistol. I bought her this pistol as a gift shortly after I got her her first firearm, which is a Ruger 1022. Took her out shooting, bought her that gun as a surprise. She loved it. She'd never been shooting before in her life. She quickly, quickly latched on to the entire idea of shooting and firearms. So we went pistol shopping and we looked at the Sig Sauer. We looked at the Smith & Wesson. We looked at Glock. And as nice as those pistols were, when she came across the USP, and there it is, she fell in love. Now, this gun fits her hand very, very well. This weapon is easily manipulated by her hands, and that was the selling point. If you are pistol shopping or if you're looking for a firearm in general, be sure it is a gun that you can manipulate well, otherwise when you need it, you may not be able to rely on it. Now the version 1 of the USP 9mm is unique because A, all of the controls can be reversed and uh, that makes the weapon nice if you're left handed and you want to shoot left handed. Uh, this gun also can be carried in three different ways. You can carry it hammer down, safety on. You can carry it hammer down, safety off in a decock type mode. Or you can carry it old school, cocked and locked with the hammer back and the safety on. Uh, this weapon is very versatile in that way. It also has a rail built into the frame. So if you want to mount a light or if you want to mount a laser or whatever else you can think of that can go on a handgun's rail, then you have the option of doing so. This firearm has three white dots as sights, and they are large and line up easily, particularly when compared to my Ruger P97 Decock. Uh, these sights are much better. I want to change them out on my Ruger to be something more similar like this. Here, The Ruger are white dots, but they're small and they don't line up well. Uh, I've seen the USP with a uh, front sight that collects light and uh, actually makes it even easier to shoot. Uh, there's a name for that, but I can't think of it right now. Uh, but it collects light, ambient light, and causes the front sight to kind of have a little bit of a glow to it. And uh, that's another way you can run this gun to make yourself more accurate. Now, if you look there, you can see that holster there. That's a crossbreed holster. And I'm going to zoom in on it here. And what's nice about that holster is the fact that it fits the pistol so well. We had a Phobos holster that we ordered online. Uh, inexpensive, decently made holster. I like the fact that it was here from Israel. But it does not cover the trigger completely. And even though we practice... Uh, extreme uh, weapon safety as far as how we draw our weapons and holster our weapons you don't want a risk of being under the pressure of using the weapon in a life or death situation and accidentally fingering the trigger before need uh, as you're drawing your weapon this crossbreed holster uh, fits the hip well and uh, it is designed to cover the entire trigger guard we do still run uh, the Phobos magazine carrier because it grabs the magazines very positively and I think that uh, you want retention. The retention that the magazine carrier has there is well, well, well made. So we do run the focus on that and uh, my, my wife loves the gun. Now the H&K is a quality gun but it is uh, pricey and you're going to pay a lot more than you will for a Glock or a SIG and so forth if you're buying an H&K. So if you want one, save your pennies and catch them on sale. Uh, is it quality? Is it worth it? Yeah. 
could be going to be cheaper and still be worth it indeed, but you're paying for some significant quality. The fit and finish on the gun, I'll bring it in one more time, is excellent. It fits together well. Now, my only complaint about the gun, and my wife would say the same, is the fact that it is a little finicky on ammunition. As per the instructions direct from H&K, you cannot run steel cased or aluminum cased ammunition in this pistol. You have to run brass cased ammunition. Now someone told me that if I polish the throat and ramp on this thing, it would take anything and it would shoot it. We haven't done that yet. Brass ammo is plentiful. We've got plenty of it. So that's what we shoot. But if you run brass, if you run steel or aluminum case, the gun will hang up. It'll stow pipe. It'll fail to eject. It does all the things you don't want your pistol to do. We run brass and we don't have any problems with it. This gun's had probably routed around 800 to 1,000 rounds through it so far. And um, it has had maybe two... Uh, malfunctions that I can recall with brass ammo and I equate that to the weapon just being broken in um, we're gonna take it out to the range in the near future and run a few boxes through it and perhaps we'll record that and give you an idea of how it runs now but uh, good purchase indeed my wife loves it it shoots well she shoots it well it's an accurate gun and uh, I know that it's a weapon that if her life depended on this weapon, with her skill set and the weapon's reliability, she should come out on top of the situation. Well, thanks for watching. If you like, give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This is the Black Rifleman, your brother from another mother, reminding you to stay strong, vigilant, and prayed up.